Hello everyone, my name is Maz Barami from World from Research. Welcome to our series on data transformation workflows with Anton Antonov. This is going to be our second session on this topic. Uh, if you have seen our previous uh, live streams with Anton, you know that you know Anton has a PhD degree in applied mathematics and he has been using World from Technology for more than 20 years. He has been working on many different topics, a few among them I can mention, algorithm development, scientific computing, mathematical modeling, natural language processing, data mining, and lots of many other interesting things. So uh, the, during the first session, it was mostly an introduction on the data uh, transformation workflow. Uh, today, you know, Anton is gonna focus more on the long form. Uh, handing over to you, Anton, looking forward to your second session. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for the uh, introduction. So uh, in the first uh, series of uh, this um, lectures, um, we in the first lecture, we introduced uh, the data transformations we consider through examples and uh, questions, question and answer type of style. Uh, all of the, I'm going to remind some of the important points we're looking into data frames or data sets. We're dealing with tabular data. So um, the most complicated uh, type of data we're going to deal with is lists of data sets or lists of uh, two-dimensional um, uh, tables, tabular data, or like associations of uh, tabular data. And um, this is the general, this uh, plot here shows uh, uh, the general workflow. It en encompasses all of the workflows uh, we're going to consider. And I'm going to go briefly through this. We're going to actually see with the examples in long form. Long form is the is going to be discussed in more detail in this uh, session. We're going to see how with the, these examples, how we go through this um, flow chart. So first we take the data uh, according to certain specifications. We do some preliminary um, summary or uh, shape uh, uh, query or analysis if the data needs to be transformed if it doesn't need to be transformed we declare victory and that's it but if we do need to transform it we go through this uh, series of uh, transformations each of these blocks here uh, the operations in the blocks can be done but they also can be skipped so you can just skip the block uh, and do something else so uh, so here we after we have decided that we need to transform the data, we might want to filter the rows or the columns, do a splitting by splitting by a certain criteria, and uh, transform the individual groups, combine the groups which are transformed, and then do some reshaping. Very often, we might be going several times through this uh, uh, loop here. So after the reshaping, we go back here and we try to evaluate, do we need to do more tra transformations? As I said, in the, sometimes for simplicity, even it's easier to to skip some of the se, to, the steps and have um, uh, have like several several transformations, uh, which in which different aspects of this uh, uh, flowchart are being followed. All right, so in uh, I'm going to discuss uh, long form in more detail uh, in this uh, session. This is um, probably the heaviest uh, heaviest example here. So I'm taking data from. Um, um, built-in uh, function example data. I can take this uh, uh, statistics uh, uh, data set, Lake Mead at uh, Hoover Dam. So these are elevation levels through different years. Um, ah, I'm here using a resource function example data set. Example data set. So if I take uh, I'm kind of digressing here, but if I take just, uh, if I call example data like that, Right. Uh, this is just going to give me an array of uh, of numbers. I might actually ask, say, for uh, column. The, what are the, the the column headings? And um, and say this. Uh, if I know the column headings, then I can attach them to uh, the data itself. But that's uh, instead of doing this uh, uh, programming these transformations, this uh, function um, resource function example data set is uh, is doing is doing this so uh, here is just uh, initial uh, preload and retrieval the the functions which are being linked here you can find them you can find them in the, the uh, resource uh, resource uh, uh, 
functions uh, site, the Wolfram function repository. So uh, I have, uh, I mean, different functions uh, can be found here. Some of the, the most uh, recent one, ones uh, is actually includes, uh, ex includes example data set. All right, so you, I mean, I'm going, again, just to finish this, you can find the, the references here uh, to, to the functions which are being used from the Wolfram function repository. So, okay, so I got the lake data. So now I'm observing the data. So we're being at this point here, right? I'm observing the data and saying, okay, yeah, well, uh, we, I can see what each row corresponds to a year. And um, I have uh, uh, the first column identifies what is the, which year we are dealing with. The rest of the columns, they show the elevation data. So although all values are numerical, in some sense, the value in the, in the, first, uh, in the first column is very different from the rest. Uh, so it's, a, it's actually an identifier. The rest are actually uh, levels. So I want to make time series for this. I want to, you know, because if I make time series, I can use some of the um, Wolfram language plot functions, or I can do some, some other time series analysis. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm transforming uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, data set using into long form. So into long form, one of the advantages of uh, long form is that metadata becomes, um, becomes data. In this particular case, the metadata are the columns from, uh, from two to 13. So the first column, as I said, is an ID, the rest uh, 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 data columns. And I want the names of these data columns to become the, the names the, to become values in a, in a separate column. This is what is happening here. First, uh, the, first uh, the first argument of uh, long form data set, this function, resource function, is uh, the ID, uh, so the ID column. So in this particular case, yeah. I, don't, I didn't need to specify the rest because uh, the, by default, everything else, which is not an ID, becomes, the, becomes variable or becomes variable column. And you can see what I'm saying, the variables are going to be transformed into the column month. And uh, the values are going to be transformed into the column elevation. And so now I'm having this representation here. So if so I go- yeah. Quick comment, like, you know, variables to basically, you know, they are taking the keys in the, uh, in the data set, right? Correct, yes. So when I, if I look into this, uh, if I look into the, uh, into the data set here, right? If I if I say do normal, uh, mistyped it. If I do normal, what is going to show is that uh, basically every row is an association, and the names, the keys in those associations, were the the column names into the data set. So. I'm basically saying, look, here is my um, ID column uh, here. It's my ID. Every everything else, uh, ev any other key, uh, needs to be put into this um, uh, into this month column, mm -hmm. and then the values, the corresponding values, they they can be, uh, they should be the in the column elevation. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. One more, like, you know, basically, you know, this question is mostly about the way that you design long form, you know, data set. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your motivation for calling that variables to instead of, for example, keys to? <laughs> so, uh, very, very good question. Also a very complicated one. And it was subject of um, at least two iterations with the uh, with the reviewers at, uh, at, the, at uh, the Wolfram function repository. So before this uh, function was approved, and I'm going to just kind of show it here, um, to some extent, and I, I'm going to explain it, but uh, some of the, this kind, the question here, here you, answer, uh, you asked can be answered by reading all of, all of the documentation here and the examples. But this is, of course, you know, I'm not just trying to wiggle out I was wondering what is the, a good name which can be easily remembered. Because if I say keys, or if I say variables, uh, or if I say columns, they're not, it's, it doesn't, it, people might get confused. My ID column here, it's also a key. 
So it's kind of like a, it's it, the the whole discussion about uh, um, long form and wide form. There are like quite a lot of overloaded terms. Now variables to month. It actually makes sense when you pronounce it first. And second, it's actually easy to remember. Next time uh, when I'm going into if this function, if I have used it once or twice, I'll remember what I need to say. I want my variables. These are the, you know, these are the, the variables here, the elevation, uh, the different months. I want them to be put into this column. The other thing is that this is actually uh, one of the most popular uh, packages in R for doing data transformations when it comes to transforming to long form. They're using something something very similar, a similar type of convention. I and, think yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes sense now. Like you, 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 yeah. can, you can move on. Like you know, yeah. that that was that was very good explanation. And uh, I yeah, and uh, just to another another thing because I mentioned here in R actually they did you can see through they were quite a lot of uh, iterations of the actual design of the functions. There are at least two or three different functions, which were initially there was something called uh, spread and gather, and then they were called uh, pivot uh, longer and pivot wider. Uh, having uh, them, uh, there is also the reshape functions. So there are quite a lot of functions in that during more or less doing the same thing, but people have uh, different levels of frustrations and uh, you know remembering uh, how, how these functions are what they do and what are the individual parameters all right so uh, so here i have uh, transformed uh, my uh, my lake mead data here and i'm going to remove um, this um, uh, this rows i have transformed it into long form every every year is uh, being uh, spread out in this uh, 15, 12 12 uh, rows with the months and the corresponding elevations. Now, I actually want to do something else. I Because I want to do time series, I want to transform a month into the, it's a numerical, more like ordinal, ordinal value, the, the value in, in the order in which it appears in the calendar. So what, what is happening? I'm going to go to this um, diagram here. What is happening? We got the data, we transformed it into long form. Now we're going here and I'm kind of saying, ah, okay, I need to select one of the of my columns and transform it in some way and then put it back. This is my combination here. So this is what this second operation here, I have, you know, uh, I just uh, showed, I basically took the, let me see, I have this uh, diagram here, right? So I, uh, with this uh, transformation here, this is my singling out of the column. Uh, this is the transformation itself, this uh, date list, whatever. And then uh, with the join, I'm putting it back into the into the into the the whole uh, data part. Now I actually want to do, and I'm going to delete uh, uh, the flowchart. Quick question, uh, Anton. Yeah. Like you know, regarding it, like you know, the month, the mm -hmm. order that we see there, like you know, if you go to the previous one, for example, April, March. So yeah. uh, is it the same ordering that we have, you know, in Wolfram language? It's not definitely alphabetical or maybe it is in the alphabetical um, yeah in this particular case it's alphabetical because one of the ways to implement long form is to is to find the unique values right or whatever so it, it's kind of sorted this kind of uniqueness throughout the keys but it's not a but it's not a hard re requirement and to some extent it's a little bit uh, like say this is actually a very good question because you see, the data here is sorted, but imagine this was alphabetically sorted. Then we actually do need to transform this. I mean, I'm going to discuss this when I'm doing uh, the trans making time series without using long form or without using the long form data set. Uh, we can rely on the fact that the data is ordered and directly do some time series uh, creation. But that's, I, I, to some extent, that's the whole point of uh, using the long form. I don't need to rely on whatever uh, implicit conventions or assumptions about the data set. If the, if the data elements, the metadata becomes data, metadata being uh, column names in this particular case, if the column names become data, then I can deal with them in whatever way I think it's appropriate according to my interpretation. This is exactly what is happening here. I'm using simply saying, look, whatever is the month, the short month name, I want to use uh, the built-in function date list to to transform this into into the into the month. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, very good explanation. Right. So, okay, so now uh, we have uh, moved the month um, 
um, yeah, we have made the month column, and now I'm just making the time series. So what is happening here with the time series? Uh, I'm uh, having some um, uh, particularly like, uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, so just trying to make an example here. So I'm splitting this data here by, by the year, right? So you can see this 136, I'm having all of this uh, triplets, all of these rows of free values, I'm having them separated into uh, with group by. And now uh, what, what I need to do is what um, I need to take, uh, I need to take the months, uh, the, for, the, for the key month, I need to take the corresponding value for the key elevation, I need to take the corresponding value and make time series. So this is what is, is happening here. This time series, it's exactly doing that. And basically for, for each of the uh, subsets, which I get by this um, group by, I'm finding, I'm getting the, the values for the month and the elevation, and then I make time series. And uh, this here, I, then I, I, can, I can just plot uh, some sample of the time series. If I look into this, um, if we look into this uh, diagram again, right? So this, uh, this what I did here is uh, this, uh, almost all these orange, uh, orange rectangles. So I did a, a group by this, I split by the year. This is my criteria. And I transform the groups. This is the, the, the time series. Like I'm taking the month, the elevation, making time series, and then I combine them. And group by, by default, combines them in an in a association. This is what, I mean, if I show you what this uh, structure is, is uh, uh, probably, yeah, it's uh, basically association of, of time series, right? All right, so, um, and again, I'm going to delete uh, uh, this uh, plot here. So what I'm, I mean, great. Just, just one yeah. technical question, you know, what was the motivation behind adding, you know, seed random there? Because as you saw, there was, um, uh, I had quite a large collection of 75 uh, time series. And uh, with uh, this, uh, this here, people, if they see the uh, say this, the recording of this lecture when they run the notebook, they're going to reproduce the results, right? So basically, every time if I didn't have seat random, if I if I if I had this uh, if I split it right, every time I do the sampling, I'll be getting different time series, different years. But now with seat random, I mean we'll have some kind of um, reproducibility of what what is what people have seen in the recording and uh, what they'll if they experiment by themselves the other is what for the, the other example here i'm making it's going to produce i mean you can see here it's going to it's going to be more uh it's going to produce similar results so and how we should interpret you know the time axis that we see there like you know does it have very a very good question meaning this actually is, um, it's not, uh, this is actually one of the, the problems with this approach. And I, uh, before I'm going to discuss uh, this third, instead of doing this uh, relative time series, I actually want to do this calendar time series, right? Uh, I'm going to go into that. I, I just, uh, well, actually I can discuss it right now. So, all right. So imagine what I actually, um, I don't like the fact that uh, my time series here uh, are relative, right? I mean, basically, we don't this uh, this one, two, three, four, whatever. This is basically seconds because Mathematica doesn't know, right? And so, uh, imagine that I actually want to to uh, to instead of uh, just the month ordinal, I want to use I want to use the actual time, and I can do this in several ways. But what I have opted to do is that I'm making another column, which is observation time, and that observation time is based on the built-in function absolute time. And so, absolute time is going to this transformation here. You see, I'm combining the year and the month, and uh, from that, I'm taking the the seconds. If I if I don't have absolute time, what is uh, going to uh, to happen here? I mean, you basically see, I'm just adding 135, you know, and now this becomes like a short data specification, but I cannot use it directly because it's not numerical. It's just strings, right? Uh, I actually want, uh, I want um, uh, to have, um, uh, to have uh, um, actual observations, observation numerical data, and I'm using this uh, uh, number, number of seconds representation from 1900 uh, January 1st. So this is the number of seconds 
until say the first day of uh, April um, 1935. And so uh, now I'm going to make time series with this uh, observation time. So basically I'm going through the same, through the same, um, you can see here, instead of taking month in elevation, which I was doing uh, here, right? I'm taking observation time and uh, elevation. And, uh, and I kind of see here, there was, uh, and so, and after I have computed this, right? And I can do, uh, I can do this again with the seed random since we, um, we just discussed it. Presumably, you know, this is going to show me uh, time series. Ah, of course, I want to do uh, here. I don't want to just take the first, um, uh, the first uh, 12 elements, but I want to get, say, I think we're doing four series before, right? So, okay. So basically now though, compared to the previous time series, right? If I do, if I do this with the, I'm, I'm not going to scroll up. I'm just going to um, order this uh, from the previous, uh, the first, uh, the first go on this. You can see that instead of having um, this, um, uh, relative times, right? I'm actually, well, DAX is here relative, but because we do actually have the seconds with years, these are not, they're just by default data, data list plots skip the year. And basically the time series themselves right now, they're actually having, uh, they, they're, they're aware of uh, which, which year these uh, values are. So I guess I answered this question, right? <laughs> so. Yes, of course. Okay. so. Why, why I'm doing this, and I actually, uh, let me actually rearrange it here since this was how the exposition happened. So can I do this without long form? Um, so, I mean, I mentioned this before, when people, when I discuss with people these transformations, right? Like this flow chart, they can tell me, look, I mean, that's great, but in real life data wrangling is actually more complicated than that. And I agree. I mean, people who are adept in uh, programming and data wrangling, they can do uh, this. Um, they can do it probably faster and better. And so here, this here shows that. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I can take the the lake data. I can uh, I can just split the lake data itself, right? Instead of transforming into long form, which I was doing earlier. And now I can drop the first value here and take uh, the, the first element and take everything else and make time series with it. And so more or less, this is what is happening here. So you see this operator rest is taking, uh, yeah, it's basically where I'm taking the values. I am, uh, I'm dropping the ID uh, column, which is the ear, the ID key, and then I'm making time series. But here we're implicitly assuming but uh, the, the data, the elevations, they're ordered uh, in, in the right order. It's like in the right, I mean, if, if, uh, if the original data set, I mentioned this earlier, if the original data set, uh, the months were ordered um, alphabetically, then actually this doesn't, it's, it's not going to be a valid, it's going to be a time series, but not uh, a time series corresponding to the data. All right, so um, um, ah, very important point. Even if we don't do this, even if we don't use uh, long form per se, in some sense, we are doing it. I mean, these transformations I mentioned, it's like you're doing long form uh, transformation in some sense. You're basically tucking it in here. But even this big part here, like we've grouped by, we still go through this uh, diagram. We split the data by some criteria. We transform the groups, we combine them. So, I mean, we're still adhering to this uh, uh, to this uh, workflow. So we're, even if we, if you don't adopt explicitly this methodology I'm presenting in these lectures, just knowing what you usually do, uh, how it kind of breaks down into this uh, uh, flowchart, it's, uh, it's helpful. So one of the uh, biggest um, applications in my opinion, and, and here probably speaking too much of, as, a, as a programmer and software developer, but is, is, that, is the use of um, long form to represent for homogeneous representation of heterogeneous data. So uh, this here, you can see, I have um, um, uh, uh, several data sets. I took them from this, uh, from the statistics package, right? And so I have the animal weights data set, employee attitude and uh, orange tree growth. So 
they are very, I mean, obviously they are with very different units, very different interpretation. Here we have the species. Here the body weight is probably in kilograms and the brain weight in grams. Like I, we see human, obviously, <clears throat> brain weight in grams. Now here the ratings for the employee attitude. They are obviously some, obviously, but they seem to be scores between zero and 100. Similarly for the orange tree growth. Now I can convert them all to long form data set. Long form data set without, um, if it is just called on the data set without specifying of the columns, it assumes that the implicit implicit row num the row numbers become this um, implicit ID column and then everything else becomes metadata. So what is happening here, you can see like say, for if we take the first uh, uh, data set, species, body weight, brain weight, mountain beaver, you can see it here. Like all this, all this, the, the first row has been transformed into three rows. And we have all the elements there, species and um, body weight and brain weight. We can say that species is an ID column, but for me, it was much easier. I mean, I don't know how many ID columns and what exactly, I mean, this obviously doesn't hold here for, for the trees. You know, we have the ID being um, splitted. This is already in long form. And um, basically, I mean, not exactly, but yeah, it has all this kind of halfway going to, to long form. Using a implicit um, automatic keys uh, is uh, it's a natural, natural thing to do. And now I have this uh, three data sets, which uh, in long form, which actually have very similar representation. They have the same, they're all with three columns and the columns have the same names. So you, in order to combine them, imagine I wanna make a big data set of every kind of example data I can find, not just say from Ephemerica, but also from my hard drive and et cetera. So one way to do that is to do this, but one additional step here, you can see that I'm actually adding the name of the data set to be part of the key. So it's not just the automatic key one, two, three, four, five, whatever, but also the name of the data set, this uh, animal weights and uh, or employee attitude, it's also added to the key. And now, I mean, I still have the same, uh, the same. this is a little bit more complicated type of uh, uh, coding, but it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, Anton, on that, you know, those three data sets, can you just very quickly explain, you know, uh, what do you mean by saying a heterogeneous data set? The, the heterogeneous, as I mentioned, the, it's a very heterogeneous from the interpretation perspective and units. And they're not, uh, they don't have these data sets, they don't have the same number of columns. You cannot say what, uh, say here, actually, there is no ID. The, each each uh, row, implicitly the row, identifies the person who gave the, the ratings. Uh, here, the species, I mean, we can see by observing the data, but the first column does have, uh, the value is an ID of the, of the record, right? Very similar to this Lake Mead kind of situation. Here, we don't have such such thing. It's just the, the um, ordinal of the row is the, it identifies the data. And here it's the one the other way around. And it's like not, nothing like the first two. Actually, the first column uh, we have, this is the ID of uh, some tree and this tree at different ages has been, have been measured. So the data both uh, as a structure, as interpretation, as in units, it doesn't have anything. I mean, none of this uh, data sets has something to do with the others. But uh, if I use the long form representation, I can actually put them in this, uh, I have this uniform uh, data structure, which is in which I'm representing them. And now I can do some combination. In this particular case, I'm just stacking them on top of each other. This is what this does, this joint here. Uh, I'm just stacking them. Uh, let me sk skip the step here. So uh, I didn't evaluate many of those. So let me evaluate here. And so this is going to get the data, then evaluate it again. And um, uh, this uh, here is going to, to produce uh, the data sets with the key with the names of the data sets being added. And now I'm just joining the data sets. And in this, this uh, three data sets, I'm producing one big data set with for 399 rows and three columns. And you can see a sample here of this, uh, of this uh, joint uh, data set. Does this make sense? Like, yes, that was very clear explanation. Yeah. So my last uh, thing, and 
I mean, I, we usually try to keep the lectures around uh, 25 minutes. We're a little bit like at 30, 31 minutes, but this is going to be a very brief um, explanation. So um, long form is very similar to the way uh, sparse matrix um, or sparse arrays are being uh, represented. And I, I use sparse matrix here, but it's actually a sparse array representation. So the, here this table shows the correspondence the sparse array rules. So here I'm making just a, a simple sparse matrix. You can see I made some, uh, yeah, I'm basically it's sparse because I have quite a lot of zeros. And now, uh, yeah, this is how I plot it. But now if I do the rules of this uh, sparse array, these are the rules representations, right? We can see that the rules are much, much sm smaller than uh, say number 20, I don't have 20 rules. I only have rules for the non-zero elements and everything else is specified as zero. So the sparse array uh, rules, they correspond to, they correspond to, um, to this um, uh, long form and um, the, <clears throat> the matrix representation, like say this with matrix form of the sparse matrix corresponds to uh, the wide form. So it's a little bit tautology here, long form, long form, but yeah, I mean, we have this long form representation of the data for sparse arrays and they interpret it in wide form. So both the plot and the matrix form, they show the wide form here. Now I want to make some analogy with uh, the long form here. So, I mean, long form, obviously, if I, first of all, if I was doing just um, directly on the, on the matrix, right? When I normalize uh, the matrix, um, I'm going to, uh, this is going to include the zeros because um, because normal, normal as math includes the zeros. I mean, just, uh, but so that's why I have filtered here the, the elements which are non-zero, but you see this, uh, this uh, long form representation here, it's very similar to what we see here. I mean, if I, if I do this, uh, if I, I mean, if I want to be more explicit about it, I can do say uh, column form and column form say, uh, let me see, map button, maybe I'm going to, yeah, because these are uh, rules, I'm going to do uh, array rules of uh, ESMA, right? And so we can see here that this, this, uh, this representation here, right? It should correspond to what we get with a long form data set. So, I mean, because I filtered the zeros, I mean, obviously, and the filtering of the zeros corresponds to this uh, calling of must, most. But yeah, there's a direct analogy between sparse arrays and uh, uh, long form representation. Another uh, thing here is that after this is represented in long form, I can do some other stuff. Like say I can sort by value, by column, whatever, right? So it's one of the things uh, I can be um, I can be doing. Now, one of the, and this is my last example. Okay, one of the interesting things here is that, and because I was uh, mentioning this in the, in the, in that uh, uh, table. So if I do uh, cross uh, tabulation of, um, of the long form, right? this long form three, what I'm going to get is the same as the matrix form of uh, the matrix, right? So cross tabulation, if we look into this uh, flow chart here, I mean, cross tabulation is one of the reshaping functions. Cross tabulation and white form are very closely related. Cross tabulation is more computational. White form is more data transformational, but I can use cross tabulation to to manipulate uh, long form and do some for interpretation purposes. And so this is what this this resource function cross tabulate is doing. And you can see the representation here; it's exactly the same as uh, uh, with the matrix. This is the reason I mentioned uh, this correspondence here in the beginning of this uh, section. The for the long form, if I use cross tabulation, I, it's the same as the matrix representation for the sparse arrays. All right, so this was the material I have, you know, so thank you. Thank you, your... Anton. Uh, let's see, uh, since there is no question, I think, you know, we could wrap up in our session. 
You are watching the second session of data transformation workflows with Anton Antonov. You can find a recorded video on the Wolfram Research YouTube channel. You can also reach out to Anton directly through the Wolfram community. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Bye.